So there's lots of talk asking when will AI catch up with humans? But what if that's the wrong framing? What if our kids never catch up with AI? You've probably seen this graph or similar, which shows how AI has been catching up with human capabilities on various different kinds of tasks. Or this graph, which shows how GPT-4 is so much better than GPT-3.5 at passing various different kinds of exams. But it's still not yet passing all of the exams. And for example, AIs can still get very confused when they're driving. So a lot of people are wondering, how long will it be until AIs can pass all of these exams and drive our cars reliably and generally replace many humans in the workforce? But what none of these graphs show is what a typical five-year-old child would be capable of. In the UK, five-year-old children are in their first year at primary school, just learning how to read, learning how to write, learning how to do the most basic of maths, developing their counting skills and doing simple additions and subtractions. And they certainly can't drive. So it's fairly obvious that ChatGPT is already better than these young kids at reading comprehension, better at computer programming, it's better at generating graphical designs. Indeed, it's better at almost any deskbound task. So if for some reason you had to employ either ChatGPT4 or a typical five-year-old child for some deskbound work, ChatGPT would obviously get the job. And I'd also rather be driven by a state-of-the-art self-driving car than by a typical five-year-old. Now, our traditional expectations would be that the five-year-olds in primary school today will go on to spend the next, say, roughly 15 years in formal education, after which they will have acquired sufficient skills to be useful in the workforce. Now, I'm the first to highlight that a good education is about way more than just marketable skills, and I'll come back to that later. But especially when it comes to students taking out loans for university education, there's an explicit assumption that this kind of formal education is an investment to get skills and competencies that will lead to better paid jobs. We can now imagine a simple graph showing the increasing skills of our children as we educate them towards 100% competency, plotted against their age as they grow up. And we know that at five years old, a child is much less capable than our current AIs for many kinds of work. As the child learns more, will there be a point where it overtakes the improving capabilities of the AIs? Maybe. But with all the investment and attention on AI, it seems just as likely that the capabilities of AIs will keep improving at least as fast as those of the children. Don't get me wrong, there could be reasons why the improvements in AI capabilities tail off or hit some kind of limit. But recent progress has surpassed many people's expectations, so I don't think it would be wise to plan on the assumption that progress will now stall. We should always plan for multiple different plausible scenarios. And it seems very plausible to me that the five-year-old kids in school today might never catch up with AI for many kinds of work. So when they finish formal education and first try to get a job, the highly automated economy that they'll encounter could require far fewer high-skilled, formally educated workers. There will still be jobs, but they'll probably be in areas that require manual dexterity or the kind of strong interpersonal, social skills and judgment that mostly come from actually being a human. And these are things that are rooted in our evolutionary heritage rather than coming from our later formal education. Indeed, the five-year-olds today are probably already far ahead of AIs in relation to these inherited skills. If this very plausible scenario does happen, then the implications for our political economy are huge, as it suggests a radical shift in the kinds of areas which people are going to be able to find jobs. There will still be plenty of work where we want humans to be significantly involved, such as in healthcare, in education, and in scientific research. But in general, there will be far fewer jobs in sectors that are self-funded through the free market, as the profit motive 
will put huge pressure on companies to use AIs instead of humans wherever possible. So this suggests a radically new way of organizing our political economy. But we only have 15 years, three election cycles, until we need to have this in place. Indeed, many researchers in the field of AI think that human-level artificial general intelligence will be a reality in much less time than 15 years. But there's lots of debate about that. I've focused here on the future of five-year-olds in primary school today to try to give a plausible, intuitive argument for why 15 years is probably the maximum time before radical impacts on our economy will happen. But unfortunately, I'm not convinced that our current political culture is up to the task of managing the speed and scale of change that seems to be coming. And the urgency isn't only coming from AI, there are other crises like climate change and demographic collapse that are also pushing us rapidly towards the need for a new structure to our economy. And these likely changes to our economy also suggests that our society will need to shift our conception of why we're educating the next generation. I'm going to do a video about this, but briefly, we need to shift away from thinking about education in terms of developing skills for the workforce and instead be thinking about mass education as a social good that is a necessary component of any healthy liberal democracy. We're training the minds of the next generation to have the knowledge and wisdom to be useful and effective citizens in this complex world. And this suggests a different understanding of how and why we fund education, which becomes another piece of the puzzle of this new political settlement that we're going to have to arrive at. And if we're not involved in the discussions for how to shape that new social contract, then those with the existing power will likely shape things to their own interests. That is why it's so important that we all discuss these issues. So what do you think about the future prospects for the youngest kids today? How do you think we should shape the society that they will grow into? Please do continue the discussion in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, then please share it on social media and subscribe to my channel where I explore ideas like this that might help us navigate through the various strands of the metacrisis so that together we can build a sustainable and fair society. Thank you for watching.